All right, guys, remember from last year where I showed you guys in my weed control video that my neighbor accidentally killed her dandelions? Well, now that she's living next to me, she's finally taking measures to the next level. I'm teaching her a thing or two, and she's learning a thing or two. And check this out. She prepared this time. Doesn't harm the lawn. You can see the active ingredient in there? What's that? 2,4-D, conchloric, you're good. That won't harm anything. <laughs> good job, Megan. Thanks, Jake. Yep. <laughs> we all learn as we go. All right, guys. There's one thing I've been waiting to do for quite some time now, and we're finally gonna do it. We're finally gonna get things moving, and that is to remove that tree right there. It's time to say goodbye. What's up guys? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. I had this tree cut down yesterday. It was a nice tree. Added a little bit of a pop to this side of the house, I thought. This side of the house does seem a little bit empty without it now. But the reason I wanted to cut it down is because I didn't want to take the risk of the tree getting bigger and the roots, you know, poking into my foundation because it's literally that far from the foundation so I had that cut down yesterday the main plan is to get this ground out this week and then I'm contemplating about what I'm actually gonna plant here I was thinking maybe some arborvitaes and some uh, forsythia bushes along the side I really like forsythias because they act as a weather gauge you see we use forsythias here in the spring as an indicator to put down our first application of malorganite so having those in your yard is a bonus and they also have a nice beautiful color in the spring. They have those beautiful yellow flowers in the spring and they have like purple flowering in the fall. Really, it's just a beautiful plant. And in addition to that, I also added some soil here on the side of the house just to level things out and get my grade restored a little bit. Let me show you a little bit of footage of how that went. Okay, so this is what it looks like today. In fact, you can see it's a lot more established. It's compacted now, which is pretty good. And you can see it's there, man. That's good. Because now what I've done is I've fixed this slope so that any water that comes from rain will now run off instead of going into my foundation like it was in the past. So the goal now is to do what I've done here and do it all the way around my house because for some reason the grade all around is jacked up and the grade actually goes toward the house instead of away from it. So all we're essentially doing here is restoring the slope. And as far as seeding goes over here, I'm not going to do it because as you can see I've actually got some nice natural growth happening already. See that? So I'm just going to see what this area can do on its own. I'm going to kind of let nature take its course. I'm going to keep fertilizing. I'm going to keep mowing properly, things like that. And I'll see what this area does. And if it doesn't fill in, of course, I could do seeding in the fall. But I just want to kind of see what good mowing, irrigation, and fertilizing can do for it this season. So with that, I have quite a task list today. And I have very little time to get those tasks done. But before we do anything, let's go in the garage real quick and take a look at what we'll be doing. Alright, so this is our task list for today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to 
enjoy our mo, as our old buddy LCN says, enjoy the mo. And then we're going to be putting down Malorganite today at 15 pounds per thousand. In addition to that, we're going to be putting down RGS at 3 ounces per thousand. That's right, I'm going at the lower rate because I already pushed the limits last week. No need to push them again. So, and of course, you can see my show notes right here. Very professional. There's my Malorganite. Don't worry, we're still friends. And there's my RGS. Now, from what I've heard, Malorganite has a new formulation this year, 6% nitrogen. I don't have it yet. I still have the 540, so I have 5% nitrogen. So if I put this down at 15 pounds per thousand, that's going to give me about three quarter pound of nitrogen. The new formulation will give me well over that. So I can't wait to try that out, and once I do, I'll let you guys know. Our new friend here, um, RGS, which I, as I've said in my last video, I believe stands for Root Growth Stimulate. And the reason I'm using this now is because it does two things. Number one, it enhances the good things we put in, like malorganite. And number two, when you put bad things in, it acts as a healing medicine. Like, for example, when you have to put pre-emergence down in the lawn to prevent any weeds from coming up, you're actually stressing out the soil. So having this in there kind of acts as a little medicine to heal that. And then lastly, I'm going to give you my tip. Just the tip. That's what she said. Today we're going to be talking all about quackgrass in the lawn. One question I know you guys might ask is, Jake, why are you putting down malorganite? I thought you didn't want to overdo it with your end rates. Well, yeah, that's kind of true. But you see, because of the fact that the temperatures are now starting to warm up a little bit, microbial activity in the soil is going to start going crazy now. They're saying temperatures up in the 70s today. You know what that means for soil temps. That's indicative that soil temps are going to raise. Perfect time to put down malorganite to encourage that microbial activity even more so that we can grow thicker turf and deeper roots. take a look at something so as I so when it comes to mowing we're mowing at about three and a half inches right now because we've just done our first cut at three inches we bagged all the stuff up now we want to start mowing a little bit higher right because we want to gradually allow this lawn to get taller so one thing you want to make sure is that after every mowing that you've only taken off about one third of the grass blades length if you take off any more you're going to stunt the growth if you're taking off exactly one third you're going to allow the lawn to stimulate more growth because in case you don't know mowing stimulates growth and when you mow very frequently and you're taking very little off the more growth that is stimulated so let's take a look at something here So this area here, this is an uncut area, and it is about five inches tall, right? Five inches. And we come over here into the cut area, we measure, and we got it down to four inches. So that's pretty good. So for any of you guys that are wondering, twice a week, just get out there and mow at your recommended height twice a week, no big deal, you should be fine. Slip or spread.
All right, this is just your basic update. It's May 8th, and we're just going to take a look and see how things look a week and a half after that application of Melorganite at three quarter pound in per thousand square feet. This area is actually looking a lot better. You guys will remember in the last video that I did tell you that I had a little bit of thinness over here. And I'll flash a clip right here of what that looks like. And here's what it looks like just a couple weeks later. Notice how it's filled in a little bit. Seriously, I mean, we still got we still got a little bit more to deal with, but I'm pretty impressed with the progress. Just look at that. Beautiful. And even as we come in here, just look at this. Because we're pushing it and we're giving it all the nutrients it needs, this lawn is literally... This lawn is literally out competing any of the weeds that we have in here. I mean, we're in the process of doing that because we have some clover that's, you know, made its way into the grow. But again, that's going to happen. We put down a pre-emergent. There's always going to be escape bees. You're not going to get every single weed every single time. Also, another thing I'm learning about pre-emergents is that they're not really um, targeted toward these broadleaf weeds. They're more targeted at the grassy weeds like the crabgrass, the foxtail. Now, one thing that I have in this lawn that is pretty prevalent throughout is if you come over here and look, I actually have a little bit of quackgrass invasion. About quackgrass, it's a cool season perennial, meaning it only grows up in the cool season grasses, and it comes back year after year, same root system, different leaves, and because it has the same root systems, that's actually its advantage. It gives it time over the winter to strengthen, and when the proper conditions hit, it starts to grow rapidly and spread everywhere. And the best way to ensure that this is your main problem is to look for what are called collapsing oracles. When you look at the stems and you'll notice these little white arms hug around the stem where the stem meets the leaves that come off of it, that's a telltale sign that you have quackgrass and you need to get rid of it. Now as far as tolerance level for quackgrass goes, it does a lot better in lawns that are mowed taller. That's why when you drive on the side of the highway, you'll notice that those patches are nothing but 99.9% .9 quackgrass because they do a lot better when they grow taller because when they grow taller, they can grow more roots and rhizomes and spread more prolifically. And that's essentially what's happening here. Now, it's not as bad. This lawn here is mowed at 4 inches, which is the tallest sitting on my lawnmower, which is what I recommend everybody mow at. And you can see it's having a party. And now this brings me to the next question. How do I get rid of quackgrass in my lawn? Now, there's two ways of approaching this that a lot of homeowners would do. The first instinct a homeowner would have would be to approach it with a chemical. Now, unfortunately, there are no selective herbicides on the market that target quackgrass directly without hurting your home lawn. That leaves us with the option of using what is called a non-selective herbicide, like glyphosate, which means it'll kill anything green that it comes in contact with, including your good turf crop. Another way to kill quackgrass would be to approach it culturally with the use of cultural practices. Cultural practices are how you approach caring for your lawn and landscapes. So these would be things like mowing, trimming, edging, fertilizing, herbicides and pesticides that we use to support our lawn. Those are all parts of cultural practice. And what we're going to do is use those to our advantage. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock my mower down a notch lower. I'm gonna start mowing at three inches. And that's gonna do two things. Number one, it's going to stunt the growth of the quackgrass. The shorter I cut it, the more it's gonna run out of juice to produce more roots and rhizomes, which means it'll die off naturally as time goes on. And number two, that's going to stimulate the growth of my Kentucky bluegrass that I know I have mixed in here with a little bit of perennial rye. Now, fun fact about Kentucky bluegrass, it has two growth patterns. It'll grow up and it'll go out and around. So essentially what we're doing by cutting it lower is we're stimulating more lateral growth. That's just Kentucky bluegrass's way of saying, fine, you want to keep cutting my head off? I'm just going to send out more roots and shoots and runners growing out to the side. You want to mess with me? I'm going to mess with you. And as time goes on, this grass will grow more prolifically out to the sides making it thicker to a point where we'll be able to naturally outcompete these weeds on its own. As far as when I'm going to start that process, I'm going to start that in about another week here. Stay tuned for a follow-up video next weekend on how that process goes. And with that, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time. Check this out. So I just cut this... Uh, little piece out from a section of the lawn over there and I wanted to show you guys something this is three weeks after the RGS the liquid aerate and the dethatch roots starting to push deeper check that out it's about as big as big as my finger check that out John Perry